Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So, Estoyo recently sent me their new resin mixer ultra to try out, and I'm super excited about trying it. So, now this is the first mixer by Estoyo that I've had, so I don't have anything to compare it to as far as other versions of it, but there are a lot of features that I think are super cool. So, it comes with a USB charging plug, which is great because you don't have to worry about batteries, which I hate batteries. Like I can never find them when I need them or the right size, or I just don't have them when something runs out of battery life. So you don't even have to worry about it. It does come with four different paddles and two different sizes. It comes with an Allen wrench to attach the base of the stand together and a silicone mat and then the stand along with some very detailed instructions on how to use it. So I'm going to put this together and it's really, really easy. Like I was able to actually do it by myself without any issues whatsoever. Like super easy. You just attach the base to the stand, put in the little screw and screw it in. Easy peasy, not much to it, right? And then I like the fact that it comes with this tiny little silicone mat that you can, you know, catch all your drippings on and you don't have to worry about anything really. And it is also adjustable, which is cool because then, you know, different size cups, all that good stuff. And yeah, so we're going to let this charge and we're going to come back and we'll play with it more here in a little bit. Now, what I want to do today is I have this wavy tray mold that I want to try out and we're going to do a few different things with it to kind of make these waves pop. So the first thing that I want to do is I am using my Let's Resin Interference Powders in gold, pink, and green. It's kind of the theme we're going with today. And I'm just going to paint them on in a couple of these waves. Now, I kind of did the math with what I have, what the items, the amount of items that I'm using, and the amount of waves in here that I can pretty much do two of each color and then I'll have a couple left over that I can kind of fiddle with later on. So we're going to start with two of each color of each of these micas. Get that done, get that cleaned up, and then kind of move on from there. Now, I, I want them to kind of be broken up. And I know that, you know, this isn't going to give it a lot of color, but that's fine. I don't want a lot of color for it. Like, I want the... I've got glass glitter and I've got just normal glitter and I want that to really shine and peek through. This is just kind of like a different, I don't know, I just, just to give it a different kind of look. Do you know what I mean? So, um, I, I, I could have used the alcohol method here, but mm, it, it's a pretty open, pretty, it's not a flat mold, obviously it's got waves, but as far as the cleaning process goes, I'm not like superly overly concerned that it's going to be a real pain in the butt to clean. I, it's not going to be any less because it's always a pain in the rear end to clean it. But you know what I mean? Like it, it could be a lot worse. It could be a lot of tiny little areas that you have to try and get that excess mica out of. This isn't like that. So a little bit of alcohol on a Q-tip, baby wipe, and it comes off easy enough. But first, you know, we got to get through this part. Now, my last video. I really, really, really appreciate all of the love that you guys showed, even though it was a terrible, disastrous mess. I do appreciate all your kind words. I am going to pull them out of the trash and see if I can save them. And if I can, I will post kind of like an updated video on that. It's going to be a while because I've got a backlog of videos that I need to get out first. So it's going to kind of be in my spare time, which I don't have a lot of. But so it'll be a while is what I'm saying. But I am going to see what we can do because then I think if I can fix it, then I can show a lot of you maybe, you know, different ways on how to do it. Whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. All right. So... We're just about done here. At least I think we are. I kind of stopped paying attention to what was I was doing in the video. But it's fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> Alright, so going over with a big poofy, just it's just a makeup powder brush. 
just to kind of make sure that everything is all nice and done, getting off like the excess. And now it's time to clean this. So right now I'm just going in with some Q-tips and alcohol. And I'm rubbing it over with the alcohol like wet. And then I am going off the other side of the Q-tip with the dry side and just kind of getting off because alcohol kind of leaves streaks sometimes. Same thing with the baby wipe. I will go in there and then after the baby wipe, if I have to use it in certain spots, I will kind of go in with a Q-tip after that just to kind of make sure that there's no like liquid spots, especially from where the resin, or not the resin, the mica powder kind of mixes up in it. And we will finish this and then jump into the next step on how I'm going to do this. So it does take me quite a while to clean it because there is so much that kind of just went everywhere. This mold, for whatever reason, when I pulled it out of the bag, was like super crazy staticky. And anytime I dipped my brush into the mica powder and brought it anywhere close to the mold, it just like flew and clung to it all over the place. Like, I know it does that normally, but this was like a thousand times worse in it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why it was so staticky, but it was. It, it It's fine. It I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. I don't know. I've never had one that was quite like that before, but it, it's all good. I, I am doing a really thorough job, or at least attempting to, because I want to make sure that it's not going to ruin any of my glitter and glass glitter coming through, because that part is going to be clear. It is just going to be the glitters. Like, so I want to make sure that nothing's going to kind of you know, ruin that. Now, I decided that what I wanted to do first is around the edges of this because I didn't want it to be like multicolor. I want it to kind of be just one color around the edge. I, I don't want the glitter and stuff to kind of spill over and you be able to see that. Now, this is where it's going to get a little tricky. I mixed up my resin and for this part of the resin, I didn't do... I didn't use the um, the mixer. It was only a tiny bit of resin, and honestly, it didn't quite come up high enough on the paddle. And if I would have used it, I think I would have just incorporated nothing but a bunch of bubbles into it. So I just did it by hand. Now, I am going with those same three interference colors that I used to dust on the mold for my outside edges. And the reason I'm doing this is because of the colors that I'm doing. I didn't want to just go ahead and do just a straight white, which I could have. But I wanted that shimmer of color in there just to kind of incorporate the edges with the center of the mold. Like, if that makes sense. I, I just want those colors to kind of pop through kind of everywhere. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit. Now, I obviously, I need to make sure that it's going to be enough that it's not going to, like, pull away from it itself as it cures. and not cover the whole thing, but I, I, I do have to be careful because of the way that these waves are. I'm going to have an issue with resin running into them. Like you can already see it towards the bottom of the one that I just poured. Now, all I'm doing is just kind of alternating the three colors. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if they are separate, if they are whatever. I mean, you're only going to catch a glimpse of that color in there anyway. So it doesn't really matter which way you do it. You know, they all have that same base undertone color. Now, I have a plan for any issues that I'm going to have with these colors that run over. We'll get to that after this part has cured and see what we've got. But you do want to make sure that if you try something like this, you're just using just the tiniest little bit, really what you need, just so that you don't have to do what I'm going to do. Now, I did decide, though, I, you know, I'm going around with my dotting tool right now for any bubbles that are trapped, you know, could be trapped along those 90 degree angles. But what I decided to do as I was looking at this is I, I get my silicone tool and I'm trying to kind of push that resin back in there. But I realized that it may not work. I may just have to, to fix it later, but there are areas like where everywhere that I dusted that 
something is going to have to go back there anyway, and it's not. It doesn't matter if I use the white back there. So I have extra resin left over from doing this. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and fill those voids now, as opposed to waiting. Because why waste the resin? I mean, I wouldn't waste it, waste it, but I can very easily just use it for this. Fill in those areas that I've covered with the mica powder. It doesn't matter what color. You're not going to see it through any see through it anyway on the other side because I've dusted it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this, and we're going to see how it works. And then it's one less thing I really have to worry about later on, honestly. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it into each one of the cavities that has the mica powder dusted on. I am being careful not to overpour. If I underpour, it's okay because when I pour the other stuff later on, if it goes over it, it's fine. Like, you're not going to see it. But I want to make sure that I don't overpour because you have to think about it like this. I don't want any other of these voids filled. I only want the ones that I want done. So if I put in so much that it's flowing into this like the edge of this mold then it's just going to start rising up in all the areas I don't want it in and that's something that you know future me is going to have to deal with and I'm trying to prevent that from happening so I'm really trying just to get what I need in here and it's not always like making it to the top of the rim of that particular wave and it is okay we're we're going to backfill it later, so that part's not really going to matter. I'm just trying to kind of get this part done so that when we go in with the glitters and stuff next, I don't really have to worry about these, like, at all. And I could do it clear and, you know, have the the glitters and whatnot spilling over into it, but I'm trying to keep each one of these waves separate as possible like I really 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 don't want one to pour into the into the next it's gonna be tricky because this is the only time that I'm pouring separately so when I do the next batch it's gonna be everything else so yeah that should be fun but we'll get there we'll get there Anyway, I'm right now I'm just trying to kind of clean up some of these areas that it's gone up too high and all that other good stuff and you know it's starting to leak into those other waves. Now not not every one of these waves goes as low as the other. So it's only going to be like the really really low ones that kind of flood to the very bottom of this mold that I'm going to have to worry about. But I don't want to have to do this. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. So I'm just taking the time cleaning it up. We're going to let this cure and see what we got. Okay, 24 hours later. Now you can see that I've got several spots where it is coming up where I don't want it. So what I'm going to do is I tried scissors. I, they kind of ish work okay, but I'm just going to take my craft blade and very easily, very carefully, I'm almost like scoring it. Like, I'm drawing several lines in it, for those of you who don't know what that, that is, several lines over and over and over again until it kind of just rips. Now, is it going to be the best job in the world and the straightest line? Absolutely not, but at least I don't have big blobs of resin leaning over, you know, into areas that I don't want it. And I did take out my, I don't know what these things are, like wire cutters, I guess, and this worked well too. It kind of was able to get through those chunky parts and I'm doing all of this and at the same time trying not to break that seal between the resin and the, the mold. So yeah. All right. So let's try this mixer now. So I've let it fully charge and they say it takes about, you know, six ish hours to do. And now I'm just going to pour my Nick Pro resin out into this cup. Now I know I don't mix my resin hardly ever actually on here and show you guys. I do always pour part B first. It doesn't matter. It's just what I do. And then I pour part A on top of it and mix it. 
All right, now let's see how this works. Now, first things that I noticed, because I did try this once off camera, is you want to have your paddle fully submerged before you turn it on. The reason being, if you turn it on and then put it in, or if you put it in when it's partially out, you are going to incorporate a ton of bubbles in it. So don't do that. I made that mistake the first time and I thought, oh my God, what is wrong with me? Maybe this doesn't work. No, it's because I had it on at the very top and I pulled all of that air into it. Now, this time I'm holding it. And as I'm holding it, I do have it on the AI mode, which they say is for beginners. I don't consider myself a beginner. I mean, I don't consider myself an expert either. I've been doing resin for about a year now, but it is nice to have that four minute timer where it's mixing it. I don't have to keep track of time. It can just do its thing and whatever. But this way you can hold it. And what I'm doing as I'm holding it is because you still need to scrape the bottom and you still need to scrape the sides, I am kind of letting it do its thing, but I am slowly, and I mean slowly because if you do it fast, you will add more air into it. I'm kind of hitting along the edges of my cup to try and have the paddles pull whatever unmixed resin is there off of it. And I'm just going to let this kind of do its thing. Now I'm, I do have this sped up because, you know, you're not going to, you don't need to see four minutes of me doing this, but I have it sped up. It does on the AI function, it has it to where it goes one way for a certain period of time and then it goes in the reverse direction and it does this several times throughout that four minutes. I don't notice that it incorporates any other air bubbles in it than that. Like I had minimal, minimal air bubbles, especially considering the crazy way that I mix my resin, which is way, way, way too fast. Did it have some in it? Yes, but this resin is a thicker viscosity resin, which is more prone to bubbles anyway than maybe your lower viscosities, you know, that are more water-like. But they weren't micro bubbles, they were just air bubbles, if that makes sense. Like the micro bubbles are one thing, those, they're not going to go away. The other bubbles, yeah, they'll rise to the surface and they're going to pop on their own. It didn't have the micro bubbles. So the few bubbles that it did have in it were ones that I don't have to worry about. My heat gun or whatever will get rid of it. All right, so the four minutes is up. So now I just kind of held it up over there, let the majority of it drip off, and then move it over to where I have the stand and let it kind of drip the rest of the way not the rest of the way because it's not all going to drip off. If you don't clean it before it dries, you will be replacing these paddles soon. But let the excess drip. I am going in here with my wooden craft stick right now and I am just scraping those edges slowly and the bottom. There was a little bit that wasn't completely, completely mixed up, but this is going to be like that with any kind of mixer that you use. It's just the way it is because they don't have like a spatula or something like that that's scraping the edges of those cups or whatever you're mixing it in but I did it slowly and it only took a few seconds I mean you saw me doing it that was it just to kind of get the little bit mixed up now I'm going to divide this resin into the six different cups that I have here and add my glitters and my glass trying to make it as even-ish as possible. I mean, it doesn't necessarily matter. Each one of these waves is kind of a different size. Like, not all of them go completely across this. So, you know, like, I, I just need enough resin to make at least two of each one. And then whatever is left over, I can add into the remaining voids that I need to fill. It, it's not a huge deal. I'm just trying to make it as even as possible. Okay. Resin is separated. Let's start adding these glitters. Now, I don't want to see clear. So I am packing this resin full of glitter and mixing it up. And this teal glitter, oh my God, it's so beautiful. I love it. I really do. Like it is gorgeous glitter. 
And now I'm going in here with some of that glitter that April gave me. It's just like this really pretty pastel pink with some other colors in it. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous glitter as well. And then we're going to go in with kind of like a champagne-y, goldish, silverish kind of color glitter. And these ones are all, well, the teal and the, the champagne color are fine glitters. Now this other, the glitter that I got from April is kind of like a medium chunk it has, it, it's got a lot of fine in it, but it does have some medium chunky pieces in it. And then now it's time to add the glass. Now, because this is heavier, it's going to sink. I kind of want it to not sink. So I decided last minute that I'm going to add some Elmer's glue to it. And I, I kind of didn't decide this until I had put all of the, the glass in there. Otherwise, I would have done the glue part first um, to try and see if I can suspend it. Now, I'm still really, really new at this whole Elmer's glue thing. And it hasn't exactly worked out the way I want it to ever yet. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I've just got to learn to stop being so scared and put more in. So when I put it in, I only put one drop in each one because it's really, it, it's like less than two ounces of resin, I think, that I used. I probably should have put two in, but it was really gloopy and kind of like slime, so I thought that it would be enough. What I should have done is after mixing it, I should have waited a few minutes before I started or paid attention and notice that the glitter, the glass was still falling and then added more glue into it later. Like after I realized that it was falling. But at that time, like who's thinking about that then? Like you, I've already done it. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't thinking about it. So I should have, but I didn't. And it all sunk, but it's fine. It's fine. I would have liked to see what it would look like if it stayed suspended for me though. Okay, so we've got everything mixed up. Now it's time to start applying these colors. Now, there's no super real rhyme or reason to how I'm going to place them, aside from the fact that in my head, I'm kind of dividing this tray in half, like the top half and the bottom half. So I'm trying to do one color or one of the voids in the top half and one near the bottom until it gets to the point where it's almost full and then it's kind of like whatever's left. And I'm trying to, if I can keep the colors like separate, not two of the same color next to each other, that's what I'm going to try to do. Is it going to work out like that? I don't know, but that's what I'm going for. Now, the only other thing that I would suggest if you try something like that, because if, if you can tell right now what I'm doing, like these, some of these are really, really slender, like on certain areas of the wave and glass probably wasn't necessarily the best thing to do in these particular voids. I should have just stayed with maybe the thicker ones to do it and had glitter on those other ones because like it was really hard to get, especially with it being gloopy like that because of the glue to get glass pieces in, in all the way across that little thing, which is barely big enough for a chunk of the glass to go anyway, if you understand what I'm saying. I don't know. I, it's just something that I was kind of noticing, watching it play back again. And I know that I had a harder time doing it, but, you know, and then it was also kind of like, you can tell that pink, glass that I put, not this one that I'm working on now, but the last one, like part of it is more packed with glass than the other part. I do go back and try and add some more in there just to kind of make it more like the same ish, but you know, it's fine. It's fine. And we're just going to go over here and we're just going to keep doing this until it gets filled. Now, <clears throat> I am trying to keep each one of them separate. Like I really don't want them to spill over into the other if I can help it. Now, if you notice right there, I there's too much resin in here. I, I thought maybe if I did the green in here, since I was already losing the green, I thought maybe it would be okay. And it just, I, I don't know. But I decided to go with green there. 
yeah, I poured too much resin there and it started overflowing. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. Like, I'm really trying to avoid that. If it goes over into the white where that resin is already dried, I'm not like crazy concerned about it. I just don't want it to go into the ones that are still wet. I don't want them to mix together if I can help it. And it's really difficult because of the way that they are. And, you know, you think that you're not putting enough in and you put more in and then all of a sudden it's done overflowed and, you know, it, it, it's just, it's a whole thing. And then you want it to go up high enough to where it's touching the top of that wave, but, you know, then it starts leaking into the next. It, it's just, it's a lot of trickiness. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. And then I realized that there's a spot that I missed to cut the excess resin off of. So I have to do that with crazy sticky hands, which I didn't want to do, but it's fine. It's fine. And yeah, we're just going to kind of cross our fingers, hope for the best with this and see what we get. Like, I think the colors look really, really pretty together. I really do. And I am already noticing that there are some areas where the glitter and the stuff is like running over. So I'm trying to kind of fix that as I go, but it's not easy because, you know, once resin decides it's going somewhere, you can't really talk it out of it. So that's where I'm at with that now. But I, I do, I do like the colors. I think it's kind of, I don't know, like it's almost calming to me, those colors. They're just really beautiful, just really, when I look at it, calming colors, I feel. And I like it a lot so far, but we're not done yet. So we'll see how it goes because we still have to add another layer onto this to cover and finish filling this mold before we can call it a day. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see. And then there's the whole, I got to get it over to my drying area without making it move and spill too. So there's, there's, there's that. But anyway, okay. So we're almost done with this and we will see how it turns out. I am super excited though. I've not done a mold like this before. So that's kind of cool. And I do have some other ideas that I want to try with it at a later time. All right, 24 hours later, here we are. All right, now I'm going to show you another way that you can use this mixer. Now you can actually stick it on the stand and let it do its thing. Again, I have it on auto or the AI rather. And you can see it's just mixing away. I do like that. I like it that I can stick it there. I don't have to necessarily hold it. I can stick it on the stand, let it mix for its four minutes and do what it wants to do. Now, back to all my hand motions, which like don't go with my words at all right now. What I'm trying to tell you is that you can see that some of those colors did mix and blend and we'll see how that looks when they're done. Now for the backing part of this, I do want to go with those same three Let's Resin colors that we've been using all along just to kind of give, you know, it's the same color, so why wouldn't we? And this way we can hide the messiness of this back of this piece. I don't know how much this tray takes since I've never used it before, so I'm guessing on the amount that I need. Now, do I have to fill it up? The entire way? Absolutely not. So if it's not enough, as long as it's enough that it covers all of what I've got going on here, then it's fine. It'll be fine and we're going to go with it. Really hope I don't have to mix up more resin because there's nothing more annoying than having to do that. Like you think, all right, I'm done with this. This is it. And then you're like, you realize you pour it and you realize like, really, I'm too short. And generally, it's those times where it's like you're just the tiniest bit too short, like an ounce. And you're like, I don't want to have to mix up an ounce worth. Like, nobody wants to do that. It's too much BS to get everything out and measure it all out and mix it up for an ounce. So we're just going to go with it as long as it covers everything. So mixing it all up and back to the mixer real quick. 
What I want to tell you about the paddles. After you're done using them, don't make the mistake that I did and let it drip and forget about it. Okay, because I've, I mean, I'm still using this and I will until I can't. But I made the mistake the first time that I used it and I set it on the stand to dry and then I finished, right? And I totally forgot to clean it. So now it's all hard resin coming, you know, and I've got drips and stuff coming down and it's just, I've ruined it. Don't make that mistake. Let it drip the excess off. You can even have it drip into like another mold that you can use, you know, the clear resin or whatever. But don't forget about it like I did. And it's really easy to clean. Like all you have to do is clean it off with a baby wipe and some alcohol after you get the majority of that resin off of there. And then you don't have an issue with it. And those paddles will last forever. Just make sure that you don't forget is all I'm saying. All right, I've got all my resin in here. Now we need to just kind of smooth it all out, get all of this stuff covered, take it to the edge and hope that I have enough to cover it all. Now, there was one area where there was some glass that it kind of came up, like the glass pieces, the way they laid came up a little higher. And I was a little concerned that I didn't have enough to kind of like completely, completely cover that. But I, I just scraped out like every, every little bit, every drop of resin right there that I had and I am just putting it in here and I'm just hoping that it'll be enough to keep that covered and we'll be good. I did kind of give it a little mixy mix just to kind of get those colors all kind of incorporated together. Hit it with the heat gun. We're going to let this cure and see how it comes out. And that's just a little bit of mica powder that didn't completely get mixed. All right, 24 hours later, you can see how it cured. I like the way that you can kind of see just the hints of the colors coming through. I think it looks really, really cool, and I'm really happy with it. I'd be more happy if it didn't have that, like, circle just the way it pulls in. But, you know, it's resin. It does what it wants. But let's see how this actually, actually looks. And how well I was able to kind of keep it, the the colors separated. That's what my main thing is. And I really like it. Now there are some areas where the color did bleed over into the other, especially around the middle of the tray. But I do like it a lot. But I'm not done. I do have some sharp edges because it did not, I didn't fill it up completely, which you're going to get regardless. You know, if you don't, fill it up to almost to the point of doming, you will get the sharp edges and you will have trimming to do. So I'm just going to take my deburring tool. I'm going to go over it real quick. And then I'm just going to take a fingernail file and kind of just smooth it all out completely, completely. And then we're going to move on to the next step because I'm not done yet. And I know you guys are all really, really surprised, right? Okay, done with that. Now it is time to accent this out a little bit more. So I decided that I didn't want to just leave each of the individual waves just like they were, which you could definitely do if you wanted to, but I chose not to. So I am taking my Deco Color Gold Fine Tip Pen or Paint Marker or whatever, and I am going in between each one of these waves just to kind of accent it, make it stand out a little bit more, give it a little bit more definition. And I feel like maybe, just maybe, it'll kind of help distract from those areas where the resin kind of bled over into the other ones. Now, is it going to cover it up? No. But I'm hoping that having those accents in there will draw your eye to that as opposed to maybe looking at the imperfections of it. Of course, my marker... I don't, I, I must have something against them or something, or they don't like me. I don't know, but they tend to like stop working the right way. You know how when you push it in and it's supposed to flow to the tip of the, of the pen, especially it's mainly just these fine tip ones. Well, I do that. And then all of a sudden it just like pours out, but it pours out from the top of it, not from where it's supposed to. So then, you know, if I do that over it, I have this gloopy mess of paint everywhere that will just ruin something. So I'm just taking it on a piece of paper, doing it, and then going back and forth. I do get smart here in a little bit and decide that it's better to use a micro brush than... <laughs> 
the way I'm doing it because it's just not going anywhere. There's no, like, actual... I don't feel like there's, like, a cotton tip on it or anything that actually, like, holds onto the paint so that you can use it for longer than, you know, a half a second before you need more. And then anytime that I'm messing it up, I am just taking a Q-tip super fast and wiping that excess off where it may go over top of those lines where I want it. And it comes off fairly easily if you do it really, really fast. If you wait, then you're going to have more troubles and you're going to have to use either, you know, alcohol or possibly even, um, oh, it's nail polish, acetone. That's it. I don't want to have to do that. So I'm just going to be really quick about it. Here's where I got smart. I think, yeah, I got smart here and I started using the micro brush instead, which the lines were lasting like a lot longer, almost the full extent of the, like the, the wave. However, they are thicker. So there is more prone because of the way the cotton tip is on it, that it sucks up more paint. So there is a lot more paint that you have to go back and wipe off. So you just need to, you know, know that that's a thing and you're going to have to clean up almost as soon as you apply it on, but it does work and it actually works fairly well. All right, just about done with this. Then I decided that I want to add a gold rim to it or edge. Why not? So I started using my round tip and then decided, nah, it's too much work. So I'm just going to use the chisel tip because then I can do it in one pass as opposed to having to color over it and having streaks and all that stuff or potentially messing up. And we're done. All right, guys, that's a wrap on this one. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I will catch you guys on Saturday for the next one. Love ya. Bye.